Thank you, Walter, for the DOI's uh, wonderful introduction, and thank you, Humanities team, more generally. Uh, this is a particularly exciting for me, being in person. This is the first presentation I've done since the pandemic began, so I, uh, I did not jump on the, the virtual presentation bandwagon that everyone was kind of forced to jump on. I was fortunately in a position where I was tenured and I didn't feel compelled to present uh, my research during the pandemic. So uh, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to kind of get back uh, into the swing of things and, and presenting my work. And uh, the work that uh, I'm going to present today is done with my junior colleague, Ken Gurley. He's a master's student in our program. Give you a little bit of background and kind of the origins of the project. Uh, as when the pandemic hit, so much research efforts went into the studying the various effects of the pandemic. I was very reluctant to, to, uh, to do that type of research. Uh, I, uh, it was just very, uh, just not into studying the pandemic. I was just trying to survive with two kids at home that stayed home that the, were home a whole year. But last spring, I finally started thinking, all right, Let's do some pandemic-related research. And so I talked to Ken, and uh, we developed uh, kind of two projects. And uh, one project was something that I wanted to test, and then I, I uh, asked him what he wanted to test within the, the general scope of, of tipping and, and the restaurant. And so he came up with a, an experiment that he wanted to run. And so we ran these experiments in a single survey, so they're both survey experiments. And so the first experiment that is uh, related to uh, face masks. So uh, about three months after the pandemic, One Fair Wage uh, uh, did a survey of restaurant servers and they found that 80% of servers reported experiencing a decline in their tipped wages. It's, it's for some, for roughly 50%, the, the decline was, was quite severe. It was over a 50% decline. And so there are various reasons why servers tip incomes declined following the onset of the pandemic. Obviously reduced patronage, uh, capacity restrictions, and the accompanying reduction in servers hours resulted in uh, lower tip wages. There was a transition from in-person dining to takeout and people tend to tip less for takeout orders compared to in-person dining. The financial hardship that the pandemic levied on uh, low wage earners in particular also resulted in them being less generous in their tipping uh, when they went out to restaurants, when they were able to go out to restaurants. And then the overall sullen mood and the social distancing mandates that restricted servers' ability to interact closely with their customers also likely had an effect, although that uh, effect has not been documented, but just logically, uh, I suspect that it did have an effect on consumers tipping generosity. So what hadn't been done, I was kind of surprised because like I said, I was kind of late to the game of getting into studying pandemic effects. But last spring, uh, when I had this idea, I thought about, well, what, what, what's the effect of servers being required to wear a face mask on customers tipping? And uh, so I did a quick Google search and uh, could find very little that had actually looked at the effect of face coverings on consumers' uh, behavior more generally, uh, but particularly uh, restaurant consumers' behavior. So uh, I, the logic was that wearing a mask would also likely have a dampening effect on consumers' tipping behavior. So there is research that links an open mouth smile with consumers', uh, consumers uh, tipping behavior. The whole service mantra, uh, the, the mantra of the service with a smile is uh, kind of underscores the, the basic logic that, uh, that uh, would drive a reduction in servers and consumers tipping behavior. So at the bottom there, kind of the basic process that uh, I wanted to test. So is wearing a mask, does it have a negative effect on consumers' perceptions of the server's friendliness because they can't see those? facial cues of friendliness. They can't see those visible cues of affect. And as a result of those diminished perceptions of friendliness, do they tend to tip uh, less than they otherwise would in the event that they 
could see servers' face and facial expressions. So, as I was reading uh, and, and searching and seeing if anyone's done this, there was one study that had been done in a retail setting. And so this study made me realize that it's also possible that consumers are able to see positive displays of emotions, such as, such as an authentic smile, in the eyes of service providers. If that's the case, then wearing a mask might not have any effect on consumers' perceptions of service friendliness or their tipping behavior. So the idea basically is that when you smile, you develop the, what they call crow's feet in your eyes. And so you can tell that people are smiling uh, even with a mask on. So this particular study that I found was done by Hoffman uh, et al. And it too was a vignette experiment and it included a mask and an open mouth smile manipulation of a hypothetical frontline employee of a fashion retail. And they found that respondents in the mask conditions rated the hypothetical employee's emotional display significantly more positively when they were smiling compared to the condition when they were not smiling. So two retail workers, one smiling without a mask, one smiling uh, uh, with, with a mask. And so, uh, and then the other conditions were not smiling with a mask and without a mask. And so the smiling conditions were rated significantly more positively than the non-smiling conditions, irrespective of whether they were wearing a mask or not. And further, the authentic smile had a positive effect on customer outcomes, advice taking, social rapport, satisfaction, irrespective of whether or not a hypothetical frontline employee was depicted wearing a mask. In fact, the study also found that wearing a mask mitigated the negative effects of not smiling on consumer outcomes. So, uh, in the event that uh, the retail worker was not smiling, the mask itself mitigated the negative effect that that otherwise has on, on these consumer outcomes. So, that was basically uh, some support for an expectation of a null effect. So, while we were predicting that there would be a negative effect of a mask on tips through perceptions or diminished perceptions of friendliness, uh, we also acknowledge that there's a good chance that there might not be any effect here. Further, it's, it could be the case that the pandemic and, 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 the, and, and the mask that, that, that emerged out of the pandemic could have actually increased consumers' tipping behavior. So some customers may have responded to visible cues of the pandemic, such as the mask, by tipping their service providers more generously than they otherwise would if such cues were absent. So in other words, and to, quite, and to quote a uh, prolific uh, tipping scholar, Mike Lynn, it is possible that periods of crisis increase perceptions of relative fortune among those less affected by the crisis and thereby enhance gratitude for services received, awarenesses of the cost involved in providing those services, and or perception of servers need for assistance, all of which would encourage tipping and increase tip amounts. So those are kind of the three basic uh, outcomes that, that, uh, that we were expecting going into the, the research. And so uh, with Ken's assistance, we created a, a survey. And as I said, we embedded two experiments in that survey and then we fielded the survey to MTurk workers. So in total, we had 1,422 MTurk workers that completed the survey for a nominal reward. And this is the independent variable, is the, the mask manip manipulation. So each one of these is basically a clean test of the effects of the mask. You can see that we also manipulated the server's uh, sex and also ma manipulated the server's race. But the cleanest manipulation, if you will, is that of uh, the mask. So they were, respondents were, were shown a picture and asked to imagine that they had taken a friend or family member out for dinner at a local restaurant, and then they received just one of these pictures. So there were 12 different conditions or six distinct uh, 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 experimental test of the mask. And those masks, by the way, were just superimposed on uh, models 
by, by Ken. Following the, the, uh, the vignette, respondents were asked to report in dollars and cents how much they would tip their server if the bill was 57.54 and they were satisfied with both the food and quality of service. Next, we displayed the same photograph that had previously been randomly assigned to respondents and asked them to report on a seven point scale how friendly the server appeared. And that was our measure of uh, perceived friendliness. Finally, at the end of the survey, there was a block of items that uh, included questions to tap uh, altruistic tipping motives and reciprocity tipping motives. So more generally, do people tip to reward good service? More generally, do people tip for altruistic reasons to help servers financially? So to get into the, the results. So this is, uh, what I'm gonna do now is just go through each one of those six distinct tasks and test of the causal effect of uh, a mask on uh, perceptions of friendliness and tipping behavior. And so you'll see that with regard to these first two, there is no statistical difference between the mass conditions and the non-mass conditions in terms of tipping behavior. But you do find a difference in perceptions of friendliness. So the mass server here is perceived significantly less friendly than the exact same photograph above without the mask. And the same pattern emerges here, although it's not quite statistically significant, directionally it is consistent with the white male server. So if we look at the black male server, you see uh, again that there is no difference in tipping between the conditions. The black female server, no difference in tipping between the conditions. But you see a difference in perceptions of friendliness. So the masked black male is perceived to be less friendly than the comparable non-masked black male. And while not statistically significant, again, the pattern with regard to the black female is exactly the same. The black female who is masked is perceived to be less friendly than her counterpart, non-masked condition. So following the exact same with the uh, Hispanic male and female, you see no difference in tipping between the mask and non-mask condition. You see the same general pattern here though with regard to perceptions, although it's much uh, less uh, disparate. But the Hispanic female, it is uh, quite a bit different. So uh, the respondents perceived her to be less friendly when she was wearing a mask. And then the bottom is the total. So just looking at the total, the difference in tips between the conditions was uh, three cents. So basically, the respondents reported they tip exactly the same whether the server's wearing a mask or not. But there is, as you would expect given our discussion to this point, there was a significant difference with regard to perceptions of friendliness overall. So this leaves open the possibility of a, a mediation process. So this leaves open up the possibility that our prediction that masks would have a negative effect on perceptions of friendliness and in turn would dampen uh, consumers tipping. So we wanted to test whether that mediation was there. And then we also wanted to test whether this process varied by uh, people's uh, motivations to tip for altruistic or reciprocity reasons. So we test for the mediation and the main thing in this figure that you want to look at is this indirect effect. So if, if, uh, if zero is not contained between these two numbers it indicates that it's significant and so the coefficient is 0.15, so it's basically telling us that there is a significant negative indirect effect of wearing a mask on tipping through perceptions of friendliness. And that effect is literally translated into 15 cents. So it's a very small indirect effect. Statistically, it is significant. In practice, it's, a, it's not that meaningful. 
15 cents. Uh, so uh, the next thing we wanted to do is look at, oh, and another thing I'll comment on. So the, the, the previous uh, slides that I've shown, they <coughs> basically that told us that there was on average, there was no difference, right? Three cents. So this negative 15 cents that we observe here, uh, indirect effect, it's clearly offset by other factors that's wiping the indirect effect out. So keep that in mind. But then we wanted to look at whether this indirect effect uh, varied as a function of these tipping motivations. So in the top part of the slide, uh, we're focused on altruistic uh, tipping motivations. And you see that there is a significant difference in the size of the indirect effect uh, across levels of altruistic uh, tipping motivation. So the effect is nearly 18% for folks who do not tip for altruistic reasons more generally. And then you get down to the folks who are high on our altruistic tipping motive measure, and the effect is cut down to, to uh, 8 cents. So, so the tipping, for people who tip for altruistic reasons, they're less sensitive to this, the negative effect of the, that the mask has on uh, perceptions of server's friendliness. But reciprocity tipping motives does not seem to make much of a difference at all. So for folks who were generally speaking tip to reward good service, uh, they ha are just as adversely affected by the uh, servers having a mask on as their, their counterparts who do not tip for uh, reciprocity reasons. So in short, uh, we find support for a null, uh, a null relationship between wearing a mask and uh, customers tipping behavior. So that's good news for restaurant servers, uh, especially given that uh, many restaurant servers are still wearing masks. And who knows, with all the uncertainty surrounding the pandemic, there, there may come time where they are mandated to wear a mask again. And, and to the degree that that happens, they don't need to worry that wearing a mask is going to uh, hurt them financially. As I mentioned, the mask was associated with lower tips. As a result, customers diminished perceptions of their friendliness, and this was especially the case among those who did not tip for altruistic reasons. But this uh, effect is offset by other factors because, again, they were at the, ultimately there was no difference in, on average. One thing that uh, I wish we would have included in our survey was a, a, a measure of partisanship. Masks have become so political, liberals wearing them to uh, signal social responsibility and concern for others. Republicans or conservatives refraining from doing so as a declaration of individual freedom. So it would have been interesting, interesting to see if people, consumers, respond differently to a mask uh, in, in terms of their partisanship. So that was something that, uh, that we didn't do, that somebody could do, and it would be interesting. So that is uh, the end of the study that I led, we, uh, Ken and I just got this paper published, so this is uh, off the, the table now. And then uh, now we're working on, on Ken's research. So I'll let him take the stage and he can kind of explain what, what he did here. All right, thanks. Um, so as Dr. Brewster said, I'm Kenneth Gorley. I'm a uh, master's student in the sociology department. And my um, area of interest is in sexuality and gender, in particular how, uh, how public discourse sort of affects the, uh, the understanding of, of uh, sexuality and gender. So when Dr. Brewster approached me to ask him to work with him on uh, this project, I sort of asked, well, how can we make it sexual? In other words, what, what relationship is there between um, Tipping practices, masks, and and sexuality, um, and I and I uh, looked at some of the research that was out there and, and saw that there was indeed some that showed that um, the color red uh, can influence tips, and that is the, the color red is sort of a, an identifier or an indicator of uh, sexual readiness or sexual um, uh, availability. 
And uh, so there definitely was a, um, a sexual component there. So I thought that would be an interesting study. And, um, and so the question that, uh, that I was asking then is how does this actually apply in restaurant server tipping and, and also because we're in the middle of a pandemic and people are wearing masks. I know some servers have uh, you know, worn different colored masks. And so if there was a red mask, how might that, would that actually have the same effect as the red lips uh, or not? So looking at some of the um, uh, studies that have been published in the past, um, there was a, a, a few projects done by a couple of researchers in France uh, Gigan and Jacob, and uh, they identified actually two conclusions that were specific to uh, uh, what I wanted to do and, and essentially uh, took the form of a replication and an extension of their research. So the first study uh, in 2012, uh, they concluded that men uh, tipped female servers who wore red lipstick at a higher rate than those who did not. So they um, actually did uh, did this as a field experiment, and so they collaborated with uh, female wait staff in restaurants and asked them to wear a particular color of lipstick during their shift and then keep track of how many tips or, or uh, yeah, the total value of tips that they got. And they found that indeed, um, well, particularly with, with male customers, that the female servers received higher tips on average when they, when they had the red lipstick on compared to another color. Then a couple years later, they, they published a, a very similar results. It was a similar field experiment, but this time they manipulated the color of the shirts. So they had their female servers wear uh, either a, a red t-shirt or a different colored t-shirt, and again, asked them to keep track of the tips, found roughly the same pattern that um, the, the servers wearing the red shirt ended up receiving higher tips from their male customers. Uh, that second study uh, did fail to replicate in at least one case. I'm going to talk about that on a later slide, but that's, uh, that's worth keeping in mind. And that was one of the reasons that this was kind of an interesting area to study. So I looked also at some of the psychological background. Well, you know, the theoretical reason that this effect might happen. And um, there's been quite a bit of research that suggests that the color red, like I said, is an indicator of sexuality, sexual readiness, sexual availability. So you can imagine uh, you know, a female, and this is both in humans and in animals, uh, they've seen that the, uh, the lips sort of uh, flush during uh, sexual readiness and, um, and, and other body parts as well. And so that can be an indicator to uh, male humans or animals that uh, there's a female who's, who's uh, sexually ready. And then um, uh, there were a number of studies. Actually, this first one is kind of interesting because it goes beyond directly coloration on body parts and just read in the proximity of an image of a woman in this one study uh, showed that the, uh, the male subjects observing images of women uh, uh, thought that they looked more attractive when they were sort of just in the, in the vicinity of the color red. Um, and then the second one that I'm highlighting here is, is uh, particular to that red shirt. So again, a, a female sort of associated with the color red uh, also was uh, the, the male subjects in that experiment were more inclined to provide assistance or, or give attention to women um, just because of that color. So the, the uh, idea that they're more sexually attractive and also that the men are going to give them more attention uh, in some way sort of makes sense. So let me talk um, just briefly about this uh, failure to replicate. So uh, Mike Lynn, who you heard about from Dr. Brewster as well, he does a lot of research into tipping. He was interested enough in the Gagan and Jacobs study about uh, clothing color to attempt to replicate it. And uh, so rather than a field experiment, he actually did a survey experiment, very much like the experiments that, uh, that we're talking about today. And he found that uh, he could not uh, reproduce the same results that Gagana Jacob did. In fact, he found that his waitresses actually received lower hypothetical tips with the red shirt. 
Um, in, a, in another series of studies, Peppercorn et al. Uh, found the same thing, that uh, uh, clothing color in, in those uh, experiments did not affect attractiveness. And so neither of these suggested that what Gagan and Jacobs did was somehow faulty, um, but what they're noticing is that there may be other particular uh, you know, context sensitive differences in what's going on. So Gagan and Jacob did their studies in France in a culture where tipping is not necessarily the norm the way it is in the United States. Uh, gratuities are sort of built into the bill and then the tips are not necessarily expected but they do come sometimes. Um, so that's one difference and then there are also potentially many cultural differences in terms of what, the, what is expected for a restaurant server to be wearing or uh, what sort of lipstick is, is considered normal, uh, what's considered professional, and what's considered attractive. All those are potentially culturally different as well. Uh, when it came to the red lipstick, I uh, am not aware of any replication attempts. So uh, we had positive results from Gagan and Jacob, but that was also a, an area that was rich for further research to sort of verify that. So, um, what did we do here? I've lost track of which slide I'm on, so my notes are not so useful, but that's okay. Um, wh what, what we did here was uh, essentially the same sort of setup that Dr. Brewster was talking about with the mask versus non-mask. Uh, we wanted to uh, do a, a survey experiment, so we provided a hypothetical vignette and gave them a picture of a server um, in, in various conditions and ask them how much they would tip. Um, so we randomized the uh, scenario based on the color red. Here we've got red lipstick. So we've got three uh, hypothetical servers, each pictured with, uh, with sort of neutral or natural colored lips as well as a, a red colored lip. And it's probably really hard to see in this, in this picture with the bad lighting and the projection, but uh, when they actually uh, took the experiment, it was like more of a full screen image, so it may have been no more noticeable. But my hope uh, was that it didn't look artificial, that it actually looked realistic. Uh, just like with the masks that, um, that we used, uh, that you saw from Dr. Brewster's study, these are uh, generated with Photoshop, so we started with stock photography images of models that looked like they were restaurant servers, and then digitally manipulated the color of the lips. To, to have one version that was natural and one version that, that was red. So the images are otherwise identical. And then we did the same thing with uh, the mask color. So just like before, we superimposed the mask onto these same servers. And in this case, the mask was either black, white, or red. And then to, to wrap up the experiment, uh, we asked the respondents how much they would tip. In this case, we actually uh, had a random bill amount as well. So when we asked them to tip, we, had, we, we asked for a dollar amount, but we ended up uh, converting that into a percentage to get a, a better baseline for comparison. And then we asked how attractive their server appeared on a, on a seven point scale. So it really um, is, is pretty close to the same setup as in the first study. So uh, first thing that I did was attempted to replicate the Gagan and Jacob findings on lip color. And I uh, began by using essentially the same model that they did in terms of uh, a statistical analysis. So this is just looking at the direct effect of uh, the variation in color on the, uh, the amount of tip. And um, we see that there's not a correlation at all. Um, for uh, looking on the line with red lips, the uh, 0.936 is the p-value, so there's almost no dis difference between red lips or not. Uh, same thing in the second model, and the reason we've got a second model here is because Gagan and Jacob studied just uh, uh, male patrons and female servers. I included both male and female on both sides, um, so I wanted to make sure I was uh, uh, looking at the, the specific effect of sex in there. Um, I didn't show it, but I also ran a model where I just filtered the data down to the male patrons and the female servers, still no significant effect. However, um, I was also interested in exploring the theory behind that. So 
I uh, took this a step further and came up with a, a moderated mediation model. Uh, and again, this follows kind of the same pattern. Uh, this, this time it's a little different than uh, what Dr. Brewster was doing in the first study uh, because we're looking at attractiveness instead of friendliness. But again, we've got this rather than just a direct, does lip color affect the tip? Now we're looking for an indirect effect. So does the lip color cause an increase in perceived attractiveness that then may result in a higher tip because of the attractiveness? And again, this is all sort of mediated or moderated rather by sex. So the, it's the uh, female servers where we would expect the lip color to increase the attractiveness and it's the male patrons who we would expect to uh, give higher tips based on that higher attractiveness. So after uh, writing this model, I didn't give you all the detailed numbers uh, this time like Dr. Brewster did, but just in summary, we saw even with this moderated mediation model, the overall effect is not significant. However, there were some interesting things in there. We did see to a statistically significant level that uh, female servers with red lips are perceived as more attractive uh, than the male server in our experiment. And male patrons give larger tips to attractive female servers. So this is kind of exactly what the theory was saying, even though it doesn't sort of generalize to uh, the overall effect that they got on tips or so. Um, and that in the, in the one case where we considered only male patrons, uh, there is the overall significant indirect effect of red lips uh, through the perceived attractiveness and moderated by server sex. So in other words, that specific case, uh, there is, it, it does get to the point where it is, just caught, crosses that threshold of statistical significance. So then I uh, did basically the same thing again, this time looking at the mask color instead of the lip color. And again, I sort of expected or hypothesized that we'd see the same results based on what Gagan and Jacob saw. Um, so I ran the same models, essentially. Uh, here's the direct effect. Does having a red mask increase tips? Well, no, uh, at least not in the first model, although it's almost that, uh, that uh, p-value of 0.05 is sort of the you know, traditional cutoff of what we call significant. So it's, it's fairly close. It's 0.06 in the first model. It's 0.047 in the second model. So there is almost a, uh, a direct effect there. However, in that second model, um, even though we have the significance on the red mask, it really doesn't line up with the same theory that it's the female servers and the male respondents driving this. Um, and I ran the, the uh, moderated mediation model to sort of break that down in a little more detail. But um, essentially what we're seeing, not, none of these other uh, coefficients are significant, but the ones that are close sort of indicate a different effect than that. We actually see that, that uh, if anything, it might be the male servers that are getting the higher tips rather than the female servers. Um, so in, in conclusion with that, the direct effect of a red mask on tips bordered on statistical significance, but it's hard to be uh, fully conclusive on that. And it was actually the male servers, not the females, who were uh, perceived as more attractive with the red mask. Uh, but this effect was only significant for female patrons. Uh, so it was almost actually the opposite of what we saw with the, uh, with the lip color. So to the extent that the red mask color actually matters, the perceived attractiveness does not fully explain the effect that we saw on tips and other factors are likely at work. So uh, specifically, uh, some of the other theories that we came up with to support that are the, um, this idea of color being related to uh, professionalism uh, or competency or authority. All of those things sort of, um, you know, may, may fit in there. So it's, it's not necessarily this sexual attractiveness in the case of the mask, which is, is sort of interesting that that's different. Um, so to sort of look at that uh, another way, we didn't see the red mask effect that we expected. But remember, we were testing red, black, and white. Uh, we did see a white mask effect that showed up. So the 
So the, the red masks uh, resulted in the highest level of attractiveness. Blacks, black masks were just right below that. The white masks were significantly lower in terms of attractiveness. Um, uh, and, and so that the theory doesn't really explain that difference uh, the, the way that we expected it to. But again, that may have something to do with professionalism or what's expected. I know uh, black clothing for uh, restaurant servers and restaurant workers often is associated with a, like a, a higher level of establishment or a more professional person involved in there. So that may have something to do with that. Unfortunately, we didn't test any of those things, so we can sort of just sort of guess on that. Uh, but despite the limitations in the study, we do find strong support for this server attractiveness being a significant predictor of tipping amount, but only by male tippers. Um, so that much at least uh, we can say with relative certainty. So overall, uh, service industry managers and workers have an ongoing interest in providing the most satisfying service possible, and tipping is a good uh, indicator of whether or not they're doing that. So we do see that the color of red has intriguing effects that in some cases may lead patrons to reward servers with higher tips. Uh, the context really matters here. So in the case of the lip color, it's, it's certainly the sexual context. Um, and uh, uh, with, the, with the face masks, there may be other things going on besides that, such as professionalism, professionalism or status. And so those could be areas where interest in future research can look at that effect. So that's pretty much what we've got. Um, and um, how are we doing on time? I'm sure we've got some time to talk about some questions or comments on either of the the two studies. A question that came to me as you were, as you were doing this was the, the sort of between red and black and, and whatever. Suppose you were to take a venue, say in um, Beverly Hills, and compare to a venue, say, Union Street uh, restaurant to take uh, Beverly Hill Grill. Would the color red <coughs> have any political ramifications? That is, somebody wearing a red mask, would they be associated with, you know, red is the color of the Republican Party, and um, sort of black, not, not of the Democratic Party, but might be more associated with Black Lives Matter, which is a democratic leader. Was there any kind of uh, political sort of leanings with the red and black in different venues? That's a, a really good question. And, and I think just like in the first study, we had, we, you know, we had wished we had asked that question about political affiliation to see if that, that played into it. We did not. Um, However, some of the other um, research and some other uh, things that people have looked at in the past looked at um, some uh, more explicit variations in the masking. I know uh, there's, there's one restaurant uh, that I know locally where the servers have a black mask with a white mustache uh, sort of printed on it. And, and so that comes across as fun and it may uh, you know, we saw that association with friendliness. And so something like that, again, obviously depending on the context as well, uh, would, would certainly fit into it. So if there were a mask that was clearly politically affiliated, I think that obviously would, would uh, have some effect where if the patrons, uh, you know, sort of followed the same political leanings, they may see a, a, you know, be able to develop a rapport with the server because of that. And that would, that would certainly uh, have some effect. Add anything to that? Yeah, it's a good question, Walter. I mean, it, it, given how everything is really seems to have been it's politicized, serious, yes. it's, right. it's really difficult to tell who, uh, what the, some of those kind of uh, interpretive lens may be. Well, wouldn't it now be the <coughs> ideal time to do it again and add that component? Because, I mean, this was like February. Yeah, it was February. Yeah. It was still when it was pretty universal. <clears throat> right in public places that people anticipated seeing other people in masks. Yeah. But then you see what I mean as it gets, hopefully, you know, as things start to, you know, ease up, there'll be a lot more variation. 
in terms of if your server has one on or not, and then you might see an even more dramatic, you know, association of the mask being a sign of, you know, political leanings, personality, sensibilities, yeah. whatever. Yeah, no, that's a good idea. I'll talk to my department chair and see if I can get some money <laughs> yeah. to do that. Uh, the, uh, the other thing I was going to add that, that Dave's comment made me think of is, is in this, in, in the, really in both experiments, but uh, I'll address the, the first one, that the, the, the mask itself is, is confounded with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So it's really difficult, and this is the best way I could think to do it, and I don't think anybody could have come up with any, any better way to do it, to be honest with you. Uh, there's really no way to disentangle uh, the mask from the, the pandemic. So it's really, a, a, and it would be an interesting question, as Dave pointed out, to do so now, because now it's, there's much more variability. So uh, the people who got the non-mask conditions in February, it's difficult to know whether they were interpreting the, the scenario as a scenario under non-pandemic conditions or whether they were interpreting the scenario under pandemic conditions. If that was the case, it would be weird that the server wasn't wearing a mask, right? So that's where it gets really muddy. And so to redo the study now, I think that would be less of a, of, of a concern. Well, I would just out that the same restaurant, there was, just, you know, some of the staff had them on and some didn't. Yeah, no, for sure. That's a good point. All right, so I do appreciate this talk, just being a personal a server myself, uh, working during the pandemic, um, having experiences of wearing a mask and, you know, serving customers, things like that. So, like, when I worked in Beverly Hills Grill, <laughs> I had, um, like, customers would ask me, can you take your mask off? Can you pull your mask down? Can I see your face? You know, but it was always smile with your eyes, like you were saying, to show them that you are genuinely friendly and things like that. So, personally, it never affected my tips. And also, I feel like it depends on where you are, where you're working location, things like that, or the particular person. It depends on their views, how they feel about the pandemic, about the mask and things like that. So sometimes as far as like tipping, it, from my experience, it was the person I served. You know, cause sometimes I don't care how great you are, how friendly you are, they're gonna tip you what they want regardless. You know, mm -hmm. so, and then to, for your study, as far as like the red lipstick, I never understood that part as far as the sexual readiness, that's what that meant. When I was a child, my father forbid me to wear red. Nail polish, clothes, everything. So I never understood why <laughs> until um, I started, I was bartending at a nightclub. And when I first started, the manager, she was always, it's always good to wear red lipstick. It's always good to wear red lipstick. I'm like, really? She's like, you get better tips. But the red and the sexual readiness, that definitely just made sense to me. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, okay. So this talk was very exciting, and I do appreciate that. And you answered a lot of questions I've had. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And just to, to piggyback real, real quick, I mean, there's a, there, the, 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 uh, the study I, I opened with, with, with the 80% decline in tip, 80% reported decline in tip, they also asked a lot of questions about uh, harassment related to mask. And so they found that a lot of female servers in particular were, uh, were basically harassed to show their face before consumers would tip. And, and so that's another whole element of that service of servers have to face related to masks. They definitely did. Mm -hmm. They used to always ask, can you pull your mask down? Can I see your face? Can I see it's a pandemic, sir. I'm yeah. not going to take my mask off. But then I've never understood how you have to wear your mask inside or walking through, but as soon as you set your table, you're free to take it off. Yeah. So I'm like, I never understood that part either as far as like, I just feel like, okay, once you start eating, okay, understood. But it's, no, it was very I mean, Yeah, there's a lot of things about the pandemic that I still don't understand, so you're in good company. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I wanted, I was wondering, um, as you were going through the literature, did you find any variation in terms of whether tipping changes between, you know, the t if time matters? So the lunch crowd versus the dinner crowd, is there a difference in tipping? 
in general or in this? Well, as you were going through the literature, I just wanted, because that was something, I know you had a few other controls, but I was wondering if there was a control for time of day. Yeah, no, we didn't really uh, include any controls because of the experimental design, mm -hmm. so kind of everything is controlled because everything's still static, mm -hmm. because they're just looking at the same pictures with, with a slight manipulation. But I think there is evidence that suggests that people do tip, tend to tip more at dinner okay. than at, at lunch. But uh, I'd have to actually look that up because it's, it could also just be largely driven by uh, bill size. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At lunch, exactly the, the, the tabs are a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was theorizing that, but I was just trying to see what the literature did come from. Okay, thank you. If there's no more commentary or questions, I just wanted to say thank you to you both um, for this very relatable um, presentation. I'm so glad that you both uh, decided to do this research. Um, so thank you all for coming, and we wanted to say, we wanted to give you tokens of gratitude, a cup for you, and a, and a journal for you. Thank you, thank you both. And thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Get your servers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs>